What if I told you that drinking too much water could be more dangerous for your kidneys than not drinking enough? And that famous eight glasses a day rule, which equals about 1.9 liters, has absolutely zero scientific evidence behind it. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and board certified obesity medicine specialist. And today I'm exposing the water myths that could be harming your kidneys while revealing what the latest 2025 research actually says about optimal hydration. After watching this video, you'll understand something about your kidney health that even some healthcare providers get wrong, and you'll know exactly how much your body actually needs based on your specific situation. Here's what we're going to cover today with specific evidence-based answers. Number one, why two to three liters daily, not eight glasses, is the scientific recommendation. Number two, the exact amount of water that can cause dangerous hyponatremia or low sodium. And there's a hint, it's actually more than eight liters. Number three, how pale urine signals perfect hydration. Number four, why kidney disease patients must limit their water intake, usually to less than 1.5 liters a day. And finally, number five, how even half a liter or 500 ml extra of water reduces the risk of kidney stones by 7%. Let's start with a really interesting fact. Your kidneys filter all your blood approximately 40 times every single day. That's right, 40 complete filtrations. Each of your kidneys contains about 1 million tiny filtering units called nephrons working around the clock. According to a comprehensive 2021 review in the European Journal of Nutrition, here's what's happening inside your body. When you drink water, your kidneys use it to maintain what we call homeostasis, or basically everything kept in balance. They ex ex end up excreting any sort of excess water as dilute urine. And so when you're well hydrated, you're going to find that your body maintains a really well balance, and you're going to find this light yellow color to your urine. Now, the goal always is to aim for about two to three liters of urine output daily. And here's a question before we move on. Did you know that your morning urine is darker because overnight your kidneys release something known as vasopressin? It's also called the antidiuretic hormone. In other words, it holds on to water, holds on to salt and gets rid of potassium. And they do this to conserve water. And if you've noticed this pattern, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's dive into the exact amounts and what the latest research shows. So here's the evidence-based truth. For healthy adults, you need about two to three liters of water daily from all sources. That includes your morning coffee, the water in your food, everything. A major 2021 study in medicine involving thousands of participants found that people maintaining this optimal intake of fluid and having good urine output had a 90% lower risk of developing chronic kidney disease. They had significantly less protein in the urine or albuminuria, and they had better preserved kidney function as they aged. Now, the National Academies of Science, they specify 3.7 liters total for men and 2.7 liters total for women for intake of fluids. But remember, about 20% of this comes from food. Hence, the recommendation of 2 to 3 liters of water intake per day. But here's the critical point that everyone misses. There is zero evidence that drinking more than 3 liters per day provides any additional kidney benefit. In fact, if you drink too much, too fast, it can become dangerous. Let's jump into the truth about that eight glasses a day myth. So it's important to destroy this myth that eight, eight ounce glasses equals about 1.9 liters. And already this is less than the scientific recommendations that I've just presented. The question is, where the heck did this rule even come from? Dr. Walton from Dartmouth Medical School conducted an exhaustive review published in the American Journal of Physiology and he concluded that there was no scientific studies that support the 8 by 8 recommendation for healthy adults in temperate climates. The origin of this 8 by 8 appears to be a 1945 Food and Nutrition Board recommendation that, believe it or not, was completely misinterpreted. They said 
humans need about 2.5 liters per day. But the next sentence, which everyone ignores, stated that most of this is contained in prepared foods. Now let's flip gears a little bit to talk about too much water and what's the end product. This is a little bit of the scary part. In a 2023 New England Journal of Medicine review, when you drink excessive amounts of water and you drink it too fast, so typically more than eight liters per day, you can develop hyponatremia or the simple term is water intoxication. Here's what happens. Your kidneys can only excrete about 0.8 to 1 liters per hour maximum. If you exceed this, water will dilute your sodium levels below the threshold of 135 millimoles per liter. And the reason this matters is the lower you go below that 135 threshold, the higher the risk becomes. Mild is headache, nausea, feeling off. Moderate symptoms could be confusion, muscle cramps, and fatigue. But severe symptoms, especially when the sodium level drops below 120, can be seizures, coma, and yes, death. A systematic review in BMJ open uh, documented multiple cases where people drinking 10 to 15 liters daily for health ended up in the ICU. This is why those social media challenges to drink a gallon an hour are so dangerous. Now, here's a question for everyone. Have you ever felt unwell after forcing yourself to drink lots of water? Let me know in the comments below. All right, let's go back to the base. How do you know when you're properly hydrated? Forget complicated formulas because there's plenty of them, but your body gives you clear, measurable signals Research from the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition identifies these specific markers. The American College of Sports Medicine specifically recommends urine-specific gravity less than or equal to 1.020, stable monitoring of morning body weight, and something known as what? W-U-T, which stands for weight, urine, and thirst. But let me make it really simple for all of you. If you go on to the simplicity part is this. If your urine looks like apple juice, you need to drink more water. If it's completely clear like water, you might be overdoing. You want a very light pale yellow, like a light lemonade color. That's perfect. Most healthy adults, they end up urinating about six to eight times per day. But anywhere between four to 10 times can be considered normal depending on what your fluid intake is, your age, your medications, bladder health, and all sorts of other factors. So relying only on how many times you urinate may not be an accurate way to do things. Now, here's where the numbers get really impressive. The American College of Physicians clinical practice guidelines state that increasing water intake to achieve at least two liters of urine output daily reduces the risk of kidney stones by 50%. Even better, there's a meta-analysis in medicine that showed that every half a liter increase in daily water intake reduces your kidney stone risk by 7%. So going from 1.5 to 2.5 liters per day could translate into about a 14% risk reduction. But remember, timing matters. A 2022 study found that people who maintain constant hydration throughout the day have 40% fewer stones than those who just chug water sporadic. Now, let's talk about some special population where less is more. This is critical information that could potentially save lives, so really pay attention. According to the New England Journal of Medicine's Nutritional Management Guidelines, when you start to get into CKD stage 3B, and beyond, so stage four, stage five dialysis, fluid intake should be limited to usually less than 1.5 liters per day, but this is individualized by your nephrologist based on your condition. Why? Because number one, the kidneys can't excrete water properly. And so your nephrologist will guide you in what's the appropriate amount. And number two is there's a risk of fluid overload. Fluid can build up. You can see it in leg swelling or it can build up in the lungs. Now in dialysis patients, you'll see that sometimes we need even stricter limits based on residual urine output. And so there, 
It may be less than 1,500. We may have to go more than that, or we may have to go less than that. Now, when it comes to adults over the age of 65, remember, thirst sensation decreases by up to 40%. And so just relying on when you're thirsty to drink water may actually be a very bad way to do things. So therefore, you have to look at the color of the urine. Of course, blood work is really helpful. Urine-specific gravity is really helpful, but just light yellow color. And of course, if anybody is dealing with women who are pregnant, in the second and third trimester, on average, you're going to need more water intake. How much? About 300 mils or so extra. Now, here's a question. If you have kidney disease, has your doctor talked about fluid restriction for you, especially if you have stage 3B, which is a GFR less than 45, or stage 4, stage 5? I would love to hear what the conversation was, what did they exactly tell you to do, and how to measure those things so you account for food. All right, my favorite, coffee and tea. I'm actually sitting here doing this recording, and I have my green tea right next to me, and it says, number one dad, because my daughters love me and I love them. Um, when it comes to coffee and tea, there's a 2003 review in the Journal of Human Nutrition, and what they showed was that caffeinated beverages do count towards hydration in regular consumers. And the latest KDGO 2024 guidelines confirm coffee hydrates effectively. Now, it has a mild diuretic effect, but if you watch the other videos on this channel on caffeine and coffee, you'll find people adapt very quickly to coffee. Number two is that tea provides similar hydration to water. Number three is that milk actually hydrates better than water due to electrolytes, but that also accounts for anything that has electrolytes already in it. Electrolyte packets, you can think about juices have it. So it doesn't have to be milk. It could be any other substance. And by milk, we're including dairy and plant-based milks. And remember, even moderate alcohol, one to two drinks, contributes to daily fluid. But the stance that I've always given on alcohol, there is absolutely zero, zero benefit to alcohol intake. Now, the one thing you got to remember is always try to limit sugar-sweetened beverages because they don't really hydrate. And as you pee out sugar, you're going to take water out for it. But number two is they're really bad for your overall health. Because of the instant spike, you're going to shuttle them all into fat storage. Now, let's shift gears a little bit to preventing versus treating chronic kidney disease with water. This distinction is crucial. Observational studies show fascinating prevention data. People drinking two to three liters per day have lower chronic kidney disease rates. Higher intake of water also associates with better overall kidney function, and the protective effect peaks out at about three liters a day. Remember, going more than three liters a day, you're not going to get any more bang for your buck. But, and this is huge, the CKD WIT, W I T, randomized trial found that coaching existing CKD patients to increase water by 0.6 liters per day did not slow progression over 12 months. The relationship is U shaped. So, what that means is in chronic kidney disease patients, GFR above 45, what they found was that both too little, less than 1.5 liters a day, and too much, greater than 3.5 liters per water intake, both of those were associated with worse CKD or chronic kidney disease outcomes. So let me give you some exact numbers to work with. Baseline for healthy adults is about two to three liters per day. And add these amounts for hot water, I'm sorry, hot weather, so if it's really hot outside, add about half a liter to 750 mils. For exercising, add about 400 to 800 mils. If you got a fever, add about 300 to 500 mils per degree above norm. If you got diarrhea or vomiting, add about half a liter to a liter extra. On the other side, if you got stage 3B, GFR below 45, or worse, stage four, stage five, limit to about 1.5 liters total, but talk to your nephrologist and figure out exactly your amount. If you got heart failure, make sure you talk to your cardiologist. And if you have liver disease with ascites, 
you got to talk to your liver specialist, but often it's less than a liter or so per day. And by the way, less than a liter is very, very hard to do. That's why you need to talk to your doctors. Now, when you start to look at an optimal approach, a good way to think about it is when you wake up in the morning, start with about half a liter. For me, when I wake up in the morning, I always try to get two glasses of water per day. If you're thinking about eating before you eat, think about a glass of water or, you know, 250 mils before each meal. Some people find it helps with digestion. Some people find it does nothing, but it's a good way to remember to always get enough fluid intake. Always remember, don't drink more than one liter per hour. You're exceeding your kidney's ability to get that water out. And if you really want to have a good, peaceful night, stop drinking water two to four hours. Most of my patients who have the male patients who have enlarged prostates, I ask them to stop drinking water about four hours. That's been a very good number to help them sleep well. But the data says about two to four hours. Now, if you want to make it more complicated or less complicated, depending on how you use it, there's a gulp rule. One gulp is about 30 mils. So you can aim for about 70 to 100 gulps daily. I don't know who's going to do that, but I just thought it was interesting for me to throw that out there. So let's give you some very important key takeaways with specific numbers to walk away with. Here's the evidence-based fact. Number one, two to three liters daily from all sources maintains optimum kidney health, not eight glasses. Number two, more than eight liters per day can risk dangerous hyponatremia. Your kidneys max out at one liter per hour. So drinking like a gallon of water at once, that is very bad and dangerous. Pale yellow urine, like very light colored lemonade, confirms proper hydration. So clear urine might mean overhydration versus apple juice looking urine might mean severe underhydration. Remember that every extra 500 mils or half a liter reduces your kidney stone risk by 7%. But consistency matters more than quantity. And finally, number five is stage 3B, usually on chronic kidney disease, requires fluid restriction, usually to less than about 1.5 liters. And if you look at the overall spectrum, more water doesn't really help kidney function above about three or so liters per day. So here's the thing. If these numbers surprise you, especially about overhydration or underhydration, or you learn something new from this video, please share it in the comments below because others watching it will re definitely benefit from this. And what is your current daily water intake? Are you in that safe two to three liter zone or have you been underdoing it or overdoing it? I would love to know, and I try to read every single comment. Now, finally, remember, taking care of your kidneys is an act of self-love. Be patient with yourself as you adjust your hydration habits. Change takes time. Habits is what we're going after. And if you know someone struggling with kidney health or confusion about water intake, sharing this information is an act of kindness that could truly make a difference in their lives as well. As always, stay hydrated, stay informed, but most importantly, Stay kind to others and to yourself. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm here to help you live your healthiest, most vibrant life possible. Until next time, take care of those amazing kidneys, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.